What is it, Delanor? Delanor suddenly murmured something. What is it? Delanor suddenly murmured something. What is it? Delanor suddenly murmured something. ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。ああ。
Uh, I thought that she had been frightened by my sudden attack. But the truth was different. Even though she held a trump card which could completely repel me, she suddenly became unable to use it and hesitated. Suddenly? Okay. Because I was thinking that you guys knew about this from the get-go and you were basically paid actors by Lambda Delta and Ber Castell. So it kind of made me it kind of made me question why Cornelia was flustered there all of a sudden, but no. It was a spur of the moment. Ben Castell or Lambda Delta told you like right then and there to not use that red truth. And because of that Cornelia was basically getting flustered, like, what do I do? What do I do? I, I don't know. I don't have my trump card. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. And that, well, the rest is history. Uh. So yeah, I guess so. Not only do you have, like, Battler being controlled by both Ben Castell and Lambda Delta, which, you know, in a normal chess game, that's... Like what the fuck is that? I. Then again, I don't know. I don't know the rules of um, of the Yumineko chess gaming yet, because you know, after three, four games of doing this stuff, apparently Beto still never gave me the memo on what the rules are when it comes to these. She just basically threw all these games at me and told me, "Hey, you figured out the rules." But, because you would say, you would think that the rules would be that, hey, since the beginning of the game till the end of the game, a piece only belongs to one side and not the other. But no, I guess in this particular game, a piece such as Battler can belong to both of them. So there's one. But now we also have like them cooperating with each other. It's no longer a game at that point. It's... It's them doing whatever the fuck they wanted. It's kind of like before starting the the fifth game, they were cooperating with each other in order to um, demote uh, Beatrice from being a master and letting Lambda become the master. And thus, Lambda, Delta, and Bercastel can play freely without Battle's interference. And now they're just they're they're not even playing a game like a, a fun rivalry game between each other. They are still doing stuff together for some unknown uh, motive that we are not aware of. Game Master, Lambda Delta no Lambda ふゆかいとはお思いますしかし全力で恋とおっしゃられたバトラにそれを打ち明けのわけにはいきませんでした許してくださいそれでもあなたは切り札を失ってもむしろ余計なことを仕上がってとラムダデルタを怒るべきだぜ金蔵が存在しないのはすでに確定事項のはずラムダデルタ卿もベロンカしてる卿もそれをよくご存知のはずですなのに二人とも金蔵が存在する余地を残して
I mean, then again, there's the example of how um, uh, Beller and Erika solved the epitaph together, which is which go which would go against uh, Lambda Delta. It would surely not help her side like at all. It helps Erika in that sense. But here we have um, we have Lambda Delta using Beller uh, not only to help her case but also just you know conspire with Baron Costello for whatever reason. So that's two. And it kind of makes you wonder how many how many times we had that kind of thing between the two of them. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, the thing is, it should be fun games and all that, you know. Rivalry is what brings the, f the most fun out of a game and such. And also risk, too, but... Like, like what I'm trying to get at, at is that if they're both working together in this game, instead of playing against each other, is that really that much fun for them? When they become boring, if they just play with the chess pieces however they wanted, without following, like, specific rules and such, instead of playing against each other at the best of their abilities, wouldn't it be more fun for them to to play against each other in a, a rivalry-type thing, instead of doing this sort of stuff together? It's, I don't know. Unless that objective, whatever it is, is more fun to them than the rivalry they would have if they were to play against each other at their fullest. You <laughs> Yeah, you do that. And then I'll gulp down the last of her black tea and stood up. Yeah, well... As long as you will be able to fight to your fullest, Delanor, without the interference of Landa and Bercastel, that is. If they are gonna allow it. Because... Okay, thinking back on... Um, what we uh, what we've seen at the beginning of the game like uh, when we've seen Erika for the first time it was after Hideyoshi died so that would technically that would probably count as the second twilight and we've seen Erika point her finger at Natsuhi as the culprit like in the parlor so that would be the point when Meta Beller over here would truly be able to come back and like he himself control the piece like the game like a uh, game piece better like he would be able to control game piece better at that point so that there would no longer be this like uh, back and forth game between lambda delta and bergastel together to toy with the game pieces for this objective that they have at that point, Beller would be back and... I know, I don't know, I guess, do something to change things. Yeah, you never did. You are quite fun in um, in the game, and you have definitely shown your intentions, like uh, while you were here. So, 
Yeah, it's all fun and games. Erika no yatsu wa saikou ni mukatsuku da na. Yokatta. Watashi mo furudo Erika ni ga mukatsui teimasu. <laughs> that girl, I swear. Dalmar's expression finally softened slightly. At the very last moment, they felt as though we finally understood each other. Fuldo Erika wa totemo jaku na sonzai desu. Saki hodo no haiboku de menboku o tsubusare fukushu shin ni moeta gitte imasu. Nani o takarande iru no ka watashi ni mo wakarimasen. Well, I will uh, definitely wish her the best as well. She has to do a lot better than up until this point. I definitely cannot wait. Yeah, we're gonna be fine. Dara nodded as though satisfied. Left the eaves of the arbor and locked out into the rain. Now that other small sign. Pieces can do nothing except fulfill the function they have been given. And that function is given to them by the one who controls them. She probably cannot disobey Bianca still. The player in control of her. ヨンダノはベルンカステル教科もしれない。しかし、この世界に受け入れたのはベアトです。この子が望まなければ、あなたは迷路庭園を抜け、ここへは至れなかったのだから。おう。ね。ベアト。ミスベアトリッチェ。あなたは私に何を求められるのか。邪悪の手先としての私があなたの何かに答えられるならば幸いなのですが。She spoke to Bato, but of course there was no response. After bowing once more in thanks for the black tea, Delnor disappeared off into the rainy rose garden. Yeah. Later, Delanor. Yeah, I guess so. I did a I did ask before about how people can just really like oh like just I, I was asking before about how people can just uh, willingly come here. But, yeah, I that uh, that definitely that definitely sounds like a good condition. He can only enter the Golden Land, like, if he can only enter this place, only battle once, and such. Otherwise, it kind of makes you question how the fuck did Delanor come here in the first place. Battler is definitely allowed here. So does Virgilia, and such. Yes. <laughs> But I know of a person who reached this place despite Battle's wishes. Uh, that would be Angie, that's for sure. Now that I'm thinking about it, yeah. I mean. I didn't even question how she reached the Golden Land, but again, it's probably something metaphorical. In which case, how do you even explain such a thing? Right now, what comes to my mind is that the whole segment that we had with the Golden Land and Sakutara's revival, to me, it felt like. Hold on, let me rub my eyes here a little bit. I'm still waking up right now. I'm definitely still waking up. 
Like uh, that whole thing with the Golden Land, the Sakthara's revival, that was like a metaphor for um, Angie. Um, coming to terms is. Uh, is that the right word? I don't know. Like coming to terms with our past and. You know, just. Um, patching things up with uh, Maria by. Okay, I'm gonna think about this a little bit later. Not like uh, I'm having like a problem thinking about this right now. Angie, in the last game, Angie reached this place by herself, even though she wasn't an invited guest. Is that also something Beto desired? Oh, okay. I I guess this could be an explanation. Like Beto didn't. Okay. On a surface level, Be uh, Beatrice did not want to be all alone with Maria and such. Maybe deep down she did want somebody to come in and fix things up. Even if Beatrice and Maria couldn't. Someone like Angie, who could do something. Maybe. <laughs> そしてドラノールが招かれたことも全てはこの子が望んだことなのですドラノールとあなたが過ごしたこのささやかな紅茶の時間さえもベアと俺はあいつから何を知れと言うんだそれがお前の心臓を探し出しやすらかに眠らせ
she had been criticizing her, blaming her entirely for their defeat. ガートルードに戸川なきなりや。ガートルード、立ってください。片足で。両手は後ろで組むよ。Gertrude followed the order and clasped her hands behind her back, standing on one leg. Erika took her time walking behind Gertrude. She was even enjoying making her wonder when she'd push. At that moment, Gertrude and Cornelia burst into bright light and disappeared. Delanor had returned at some point, and had sent them back to heaven for the time being. Etika, who had her fun spoiled, directed an openly malicious expression at Delanor. Miss Erika, Waga Buka no Toga wa Joshi no Watashi ga seoimasu. Douka Buka o oyurushi kudasai. No thank you desu. Erika slowly grabbed hold of the back of Dalnor's hair and tugged on it unrelentingly. Dalnor's neck tilted unnaturally backwards, creaking. I don't know if I can't do it, but I can't do it. あんたに傷つく心なんてあるわけもないです。魔女狩り殺人人形の分際で私に口答えする気ですか。大ベルンカステル教の使者にして分身のこの私に。いいえ。あんたらが使えないから私がベルンカステル教にお叱りを受ける
人間の誰にも不可能であったと語り未知の魔女が存在しているかのような幻想を作り出していますまずはこの魔女幻想を叩き潰すことから始めましょう手紙が届けられた昨晩の食堂の状況から確認していきます了解ですガートルードコーネリア昨晩の食堂の親族会議を再構築 Wait, hold on a second. It does make me think back on、uh, when we heard the knock on the door. That would be similar to when Shannon and Kanon entered and such. Which would be similar to Beatrice. Which makes me think that, again, Beatrice, Shannon, and or Kanon like, are. Are the same people. Either Shannon is the same as Beatrice or Kanon is the same as Beatrice. But it makes me think who else would know the kind of knock that Shannon and Kanon would know? I mean, obviously, some of the other servants would. But it makes me think of Maria as well, since from my previous theories, I. I was thinking of how Maria spent a lot of time with Beatrice, thus, she probably spent a lot of time with Shannon or Kanon. And Maria would definitely know of、uh, Beatrice's knock, hence, she would know of Shannon or Kanon's way of knocking, which would make everyone think that, oh, it was Beatrice, because she only knows that Beatrice is how, like, Beatrice would knock in that way. So, yeah, it kind of makes me think. Because I,、well, I did bring up the theory that Maria is the one who,、uh, who was carrying like, the letters. Like, when we had that closed study room in the first episode, and when we had that closed parlor room with Rosa and Bedler and Maria at the end of episode two. Like, she carries these messages as well. So, yeah. It kind of makes me think that maybe it was Maria? Yeah, who knows? The family conference last night was conducted with the adult relatives and Bella present. And partway through, the servants arrived to serve tea. キンキュ、慎重申し上げる。親族会議以前にエリカ、ジョージ、ジェシカ、マリア、ナンジン、ゴーダ、クマサワは屋敷より退出し、ゲストハウスへ移動した者なり。キンキュ、慎重申し上げ
I mean, that is one possibility. いえいえ。ゲストハウスに行ったはずの人物でも可能です。屋敷は施錠され、外部の人間は入れなかったそうですが、ゲストハウスに戻った振りをして、屋敷内にこっそりと隠れていた人間がいたなら、その人物が手
should I say that, hey, the letter, including the envelope, was not touched by those people, in which case, I can exclude those people as the ones responsible for putting the letter there in the first place. Or should I go with my own idea that, just because the letter was not touched, it doesn't necessarily mean that those people did not touch the envelope and such. So those people could count as well. I don't know. じゃあ、カノンが給仕に訪れて扉を閉じる瞬間に最後に食堂に入った最後尾の人間は誰例えばカノンと最後尾のカノンが扉を閉める時に、こっそりポトリと手紙を落とせば簡単じゃない。食